to play you the sound of a pipistrelle bat flying along a hedgerow. Sound like a bat's tail. It's gone down there, now it turns around and comes back again. It's gone down there, and it'll turn around and come back again. That's the sound of a pipistrelle bat on one of these bat tails. Well, that means that every wing beat, that's about ten times a second, they shout, Oi! 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 And listen to the echoes to come back. Now you've all stood under bridges or in tunnels and you go, Oi! Or shouted your name and you hear it come back to you. So the sound takes time to go from your mouth over to hit that surface and then to bounce back. It's a bit like throwing a ball at the surface. The sound goes over, hits the surface, and comes back to you. It takes time to do it. And the bats can work out from the time it takes the sound to go from their mouth, come back to their ears, how far away the object is. And they can work out whether it's a surface, whether it's an insect. In fact, they have a complete picture of everything around them in echoes. So they're flying around catching insects and they're catching little tiny insects like midges and mosquitoes, gnats, small moths, small flies. And each of these tiny little bats will eat as many as the equivalent of uh, 3,000 midges a night. 3,000 midges a night. That's an awful lot of midges, isn't it? Yep. Now, did I tell you that they weigh five grams or thereabouts? I told you how big they are. I didn't tell you they weigh about five grams. What does five grams feel like? Something you use in school every day weighs five grams. That's the first thing people say. So I went off and uh, weighed a nice brand new pencil with a rubber on the end. And a brand new pencil that weighs ten grams. So a half inch pencil. What else do you think? That's the second thing people always <laughs> suggest. Yep. Well, what size rubber is this? You know, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and I've had a very good answer here. A sheet of A4 paper weighs five grams. Bats only have one baby a year, and when they're in there, they don't build nests. And they're not rodents. They are not flying mice contrary to what a lot of people think. The bats are a group of animals, completely separate from rodents, just as we're separate from rodents, bats are too, separate from us. And these baby bats are, they have no fur and they're blind when they're born, and they, by, by three weeks they're starting to fly, they've grown their fur, their eyes are open, and they're starting to fly, and they'll come out and they'll fly around, they'll come out after their mums have gone out. In some parts of the world there are fruit bats. But you only get fruit bats in hot countries, where there's fruit all the year round. And they're very important for seed dispersal. You done seed dispersal in school? Yeah, yeah. Well, the fruit bats eat the fruit, swallow it all, and that includes the seeds, so they poo up the seeds when they're flying over, when they're flying around. And you've seen these great big forest fires destroying tropical rainforests. Well, it's been shown by some studies over the last uh, five years, in various parts of the world, that the regeneration of that forest is primarily due to the fruit bats flying around. So no fruit bats, you wouldn't have any regeneration. And there's great concern now in some parts of the world because Fruit bats are being hunted in places like Indonesia and Malaysia, and a lot of them are being, being sold to the restaurants and so forth to feed well-fed Western tourists. No problem at all with people on subsistence diets catching whatever they can to keep themselves alive, but um, a lot of these bats are now being served up in local restaurants. And the, the, I was reading yesterday great concern that some of these fruit bats could be extinct within the next um, eight to twenty years, and when they go extinct, there'll be nothing there to distribute the seeds around. Some of the bats also 
eat nectar. You've done pollination of flowers, haven't you? Yeah. Well, in some of the tropical forests, some of the pollination is carried out by bats, which go along. The flowers open at night specifically for the bats. The bat's snout is the same shape as the flower, and the pollen-bearing organs around the mouth of the flower. The bat goes along to get the nectar, which is deep down in the bottom of the flower. It goes along, puts its snout in the flower, gets its snout coated with pollen, pulls away, goes off to the next flower, takes the pollen with it. And that first flower that is visited has been pollinated and it will fade immediately because somehow the plant realises it doesn't want to waste the energy of another bat going along there to get food that's no longer available. It's all been had by the first bat that visited. And <laughs> some of these um, some of these plants, cactus plants in uh, in the desert parts of the United States, for example, there's a bat that goes along and it does the pollination.